Not sure if you've seen the horror stories of resin prints exploding because of uncured resin inside. Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at an easy DIY solution to cure the inside of your hollow prints. Hey, it's Andrew from Hames' Hobbies. And the first question I'm going to answer is, why is it important to cure the inside of your hollow models? Now, with the cases stated at the start of this video, a lot of those problems have occurred because there's been this enclosed cavity in those models with some uncured liquid resin inside. And over time, pressure builds up and that liquid resin wants to kind of escape. And it'll do that in sometimes large ways with like big fissures and cracks in the print, or it will make a small kind of crack and slowly seep out. And so those are usually the result of poor sculpting or poor supporting slash hollowing. When you hollow your models, you wanna add drainage holes so resin can get out and that isn't trapped inside, but also just in the printing and the washing cleaning stage, you can get IPA inside and clean out the inside as well properly. So what we're gonna be looking at are models that have been hollowed properly with drainage holes and how do we get a light source inside or how do we get UV light inside those hollow prints to make sure that they're clean. Now, the main reason we do that is because uncured resin is toxic. And even if you're not touching it, it can still be quite harmful. For me personally, I like to err on the side of caution and kind of be a little over cautious. If I was looking back on my life, I'd rather laugh at myself and be like, oh man, I was too cautious and went over the top on safety than regret that I wasn't cautious enough and have caused harm to myself or someone in my family or something like that. This is what we're doing it so our models don't explode on our shelves because I've oh, the, the stories I've heard in Facebook groups. I don't want that to happen. So basically our easy solution is this kind of UV snake. And basically what we do is we, it's got a UV LED and we take it. But before we can do that, I'm going to show you all the things that you need and how to make it. Now, I just want to state that I'm not a trained electrician, not that you need to be a certified electrician to build this circuit, but I just want to let you know that my knowledge is quite limited. But yeah, anything, if there's updates or if there's corrections people make in the comments, I will leave a pinned comment at the top with just all the updates as things go. And you'll first obviously need a UV LED, preferably in the wavelength that your resin is curing. For my instance, it's around 405 nanometers, is it nano? Whatever, NM. 405 nm that's usually the resin that we use some sort of battery attachment so that you can attach your battery to and then the appropriate battery to go with that battery attachment i'm going for a 9 volt battery but you might do i don't know 2 aa or something like that you need a resistor for the circuit um some people might do it without the resistor i asked the the staff at the electronic store when i was buying everything and they said i needed a resistor and calculated it for me and it turned out to be 300 ohms take that with you will i'm just showing you what worked for me but yeah, get help where you can. And finally, you need a soldering iron and some solder. Now this is to help uh, form really good contacts between the components. Now, initially I used electrical tape and the tape just, it was very inconsistent. It, it couldn't hold the wires together. And so the light would flicker on and off. And so I wanted something that was more reliable. So I just bought a soldering kit for $20. It is 7.05 on Thursday morning and we've picked up our soldering iron from the hardware store. It's too early for this, I have to go to work. I bought that and so I was able to assemble the circuit now, one of the things that I did in mine, and I'm not sure if it's something that's completely necessary, is I put the resistor on the positive side. And so the way to work that out is on the battery connector, the positive is the red. And then if you look at your LED, there is a flat side. That flat side goes to the negative side. And so you wanna use the pin that's on the opposite side and that will be the positive. And then so I linked from the battery connector, positive to positive and then negative to negative. I was about to give up hope, like the soldering iron came by itself, but in this little secret compartment here, oh, the solder. Took the soldering iron and I spent five minutes trying to work it out just because I haven't soldered anything since high school. And then I connected the components very uh, uncoordinatedly. But once that's done, it's done. Like it's pretty simple. Wait, oh my gosh, get the battery. Yeah, works. Hopefully that's easy for you. Now, one of the things that's a bit tricky is how do you know when you've cured the inside of the print? On the outside, when we're curing our models in like a wash and cure or whatever setup we have, we can touch the prints while wearing gloves and we can feel if it's still tacky, if it's still sticky. But on the inside, unless we've got this like giant hole, we can't actually tell if it still needs to be cured. What I did was I put the LED in front of an uncured print for just X amount of time. And every 30 seconds, I would touch the print to see if it was still tacky. And I just kept repeating that. And eventually around the four minute mark, 
it, it felt like not sticky anymore and that it was cured. So that was kind of a ballpark estimate of how much time I needed to do. And depending on what you get and what components you get and how strong they are and stuff like that, that time might change. So you just might have to test it yourself, but it's a very easy way to do that. And so what I would do now is put this snake up the holes inside a hollow print and leave it there for maybe four to five minutes if it's just the one hole. But if there's multiple holes in the model, I might go for three to four minutes per hole. And there might be some overlap as the different holes will give you access to different parts of the hollow print but just wanting to make sure that kind of everything gets cured as much as we can. This might be a bit overkill, but it's just trying to make sure that I don't have any little resin leaks or anything like that over my nice, pretty, well, a lot of them are unpainted at the moment, but they're gonna be painted soon, but I just don't want any drama with that. And so let me know your solutions for curing your holo models. If you wanna watch another DIY video where I look at recycling your IPA, you can click this video over here, or if you'd like to see another hobby related video, click over here. Thank you for watching and happy hobbying.